My patrons got to see work in progress and early release shots of this figure, in addition to high resolution images that most people wouldn't see in any of my galleries. If you want to join them, all you have to do is donate even the smallest amount. Link is in the description below. <laughs> Alright guys, this project has been way, way, way overdue, but we're back to uh, making the champions from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in the order that I encountered them during my playthrough of the game. And the second one for me was Daruk, the Goron Champion. The biggest challenge of Daruk is the Goron's unique physique. They have these gigantic round bodies with huge arms, but tiny, almost non-existent little legs. Probably because whenever they had to move fast, all they do is curl up and roll around, so they don't really need long legs for running. Um, so because of that unique physique, there just wasn't a toy with this anatomy that existed when I completed the Mifa figure. So I was, um, I was looking for months at all kinds of toys that I could try and use to make this figure um, and coming up pretty much fruitless. All the way up until Rhode Island Comic Con when I, for the first time, laid my eyes on Tomy's new Pokemon Heroes Snorlax figure. Ah yes, Snorlax. Now there's a Goron-like physique. A big round body with a huge head, uh, short stumpy little legs, which are in fact just kind of feet sticking out of his hips. And, um, uh, well the arms are a bit short, but you know, I could work with that because he still had elbows. Despite the fact that the elbow is practically built into where Snorlax's wrist would be, but, you know, it, it was something that I could work with. So when I saw that Snorlax, I'm like, finally, I have found my Daruk. Of course, Snorlax has feet coming directly out of his hips, and uh, even if they are quite stumpy, Snorlax, um, not Snorlax, Daruk actually does have some legs. So I had to find something that I could stick on to the feet to make it look more, you know, leg-like. Um, I found this old crappy Ninja Turtle figure that wasn't really part of my childhood collection, was kind of an also-ran, an extra Leonardo figure that had a stupid gimmick that didn't work anymore, so I lopped off his legs at the knees, and with a little bit of re-sculpting to give him toes, I was able to attach them onto Snorlax's feet, and then, uh, you know, carve away at them, uh, leaving the ball joints intact so they could still attach and move around and stuff, but, um... You know, that they kind of... I turned Snorlax's feet into Daruk's thighs. And then everything below his little Goron knees are Leonardo's feet. So, yeah, there you go. A Ninja Turtle has given Snorlax legs. Now that Daruk had legs, all that was left was to change um, the perfectly smooth, round little Snorlax body into a lumpy, rocky, muscly Goron body. This includes the big old turtle-like shell they have on their back, and his abs and uh, pecs. Now, I know there's actually a lot more muscle groups, but, you know, I'm not that good at sculpting realistic musculature. It's why I've mostly done Sonic figures. But, you know, I was able to get some of his musculature in there, in addition to his pretty epic chest hair. Because, uh, um, you know, Gorons are kind of like an entire race of dad bods, you know? Like, they're obviously still strong, but they're all round and roly-poly, and they have hair coming out of places where young people just don't have hair, typically. Uh, segue into the giant shoulder tufts, because there's a... Wait, is that even hair, or is it just part of a chitinous carapace that Gorons have? I mean, it's colored the same as his beard, but is even his beard hair? What are Gorons? Their physiology is so weird. They have no females, yet they still have nipples and belly buttons. How do you have those things if you have no females? What are you, Gorons? Perhaps the most uh, sculpting that I had to do was on the arms. As you can tell, um, you know, just past the elbow joint, Snorlax has five little claws, and that's about it. So I had to basically make an entire forearm for this guy. And then once the forearm had settled, I made a hand on the end of it. Um, now, hands are pretty hard to sculpt, but uh, I'm pretty proud that I was able to make a couple of big old fists, which, you know, kind of work. Uh, so, yeah, this was probably the most intensive sculpting. 
Um, although it didn't use quite as much material as later on. You'll see that what I'm talking about later. But yeah, like, uh, nice hands. Uh, now, Daruk's outfit is mostly just a sumo wrestling style loincloth thing that he wears. I mean, it's not exactly like a sumo wrestler's uh, thong, but it's kind of similar. I think that's what they based it on. Um, basically, it's just a rope of epoxy sculpt that I put around his waist and then, um, you know, loinclothy bits. He has a big bow on the back of it. And underneath, there's like a thing covering his Goron genitals, which I'm wondering if they even have, because as it's been previously mentioned, no females. Or do they seek out Gerudo to mate with, the same way that Gerudo seek out Hylians? Oh god, I do not want to think about that! Why did I say it out loud? And now, here's where pretty much most of the material went. Uh, Daruk's head used more sculpting material than many of my figures ever use. Like, I think Daruk may have single-handedly used more epoxy sculpt than any other figure I've ever made. Even figures that are twice his size. Like, like, and a lot of that, like, quite a bit of it went into making his forearms and hands, yes, but this hair. I mean, just look at this glorious mane. This this was just two days worth of sculpting here. Like, I had to make his his beard and his big old hair and his mustache and his giant mouth and his two beady little eyes. Like, that's all, that's all sculpted. It's solid epoxy. Like, that hollow little Snorlax head is now this big, gigantic mane of glorious hair. Way more than, uh, than Darunia had. And I think it looks pretty darn spiffy. Alright, so here was Daruk, back before I had painted any of his components, because I wanted to make sure that the figure would, uh, you know, work, that none of his parts would clip into each other, because, um, aside from being able to take off the head and legs, Snorlax's body can't really be dismantled, so, uh, in this case it just means I can't pull the arms out, but, you know, I just wanted to make sure that everything looked right before I tried painting it. So now, let's get into the painting job. It's just amazing how much a figure can come to life with an, with an extra little bit of painting, huh? I mean, like, really, it just doesn't look like anything when it's done in that, like, prototype gray color. But, man, does it really come alive as Daruk once you paint it. Uh, so here's Daruk in his full painted glory. I did a little bit of re-sculpting on the straps and his biceps, which is why that's the one unpainted part you see in this photo. But, um, you know, this is Daruk the Goron. He's not yet the champion of the Goron people. For that, he needs his garb. So, uh, let's go ahead and dress him up. The champion sash that Daruk wears is just a blue plastic shopping bag, which I cut into a strip and folded around him in just the right way. And, um, I painted the, you know, the, the, the divine beast that he rides on it, because it's a lizard. And uh, then I gave him his little chain. It's an actual chain that I painted gold. It was originally silver, I painted it gold. Uh, so, pulling back, we can see Daruk in his fully revealed glory. Uh, from behind, you basically just see what the picture of was the thing. But now you have a little bit more context, because you can see his entire body. Uh, so with all that done, um, let's move around to the front so you can appreciate it more. And check him out. Then he just looks so happy with his Big old Goron smile on his giant pink lip and his epic mustache. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so, yep, that is Daruk. And uh, he is uh, very articulated. Well, not very articulated, but he has all Snorlax's articulation. So, you know, universal shoulders, 90 degree elbows, um, little ball joints for his legs. And his uh, hips rotate around so that you can get one of his legs forward and backwards. So he can look a little bit more dynamic when he's standing at angles. And a ball jointed head. So, um, put up next to Mifa and Link, you can see that... Daruk looks sufficiently large next to them. I mean, aside from the fact that he's just this huge, broad thing, he's also six inches tall. Um, maybe not the, maybe not quite as big as he's depicted in the game, but it always seemed kind of weird how the figure, how the characters scaled next to each other. I don't think he was ever fully consistent, which is a little bit weird. But hey, that's Daruk, the second champion. The next champion I met in the game was Urbosa. She'll be coming sooner.